Hello, everyone. Welcome to this live plan with me class for July, which is all about doing a mid-year reset and review. So we've reached the end of June. Half of the year is now behind us. And at the this point in the year, this is when I like to take time to review my plans and goals um, that I've set at the beginning of the year to ensure that I'm on track and see if any changes or updates or additions need to be added so that I have a very clear idea of what I'm trying to achieve before the year's end. So I welcome you to join me today to break out your planners, your planning supplies, your notebooks, and your favorite beverage. I have a coffee here and a very big water because I expect this video is going to be a little lengthy um, because we're going to go through this process together and have a little plan with me session for July as well. So I hope you enjoy today's video. So hello and welcome to today's live plan with me and mid-year review. If you are joining me live, I am so glad to have you with me here today. And I want to take a moment to introduce myself to you in a moment, but I want you guys to introduce yourselves as well in the live chat. And I can already see the live chat, the comments and reactions are popping off. So I'm so happy to see you guys are chatting along. Basically, I want you to let me know your name, where you're tuning in from, which planner you'll be using today for the planning session, and feel free to share like an Instagram handle or something like that um, so that we can get connected and stay in touch after this event. So if you are watching the replay, feel free to do the same in the comments. And I know that even if you couldn't make it live, I still want this to be a really interactive event for you all. So feel free to add into the conversation in the comments. Feel free to ask me questions as we go along. And even after the live event, I'll be going through my comments and responding to you as well. Now, I am sure most of you know who I am, but in case you are new around here, I would like to say hello and welcome. My name is Alexis, but I'm also known as Miss Trenchcoat all across the internet. I'm an online entrepreneur who designs and sells productivity tools, strategies, and skills to help you manifest success with less stress. And if that sounds interesting to you, I'll leave some links down below in the description box where you can check out more of my work online and feel free to download some of my latest productivity tools over at thecharmshop.com. Okay, so I hope all of you are as excited about today's plan with me as I am, because I'm not sure if you guys can tell or not, and I would love to see you guys tell me in the comments. Make sure that you guys are seeing me in good quality. Make sure you guys are hearing me. If you guys could just drop me a message, that would be awesome. But I don't know if you can tell, I've done a significant amount of preparation and upgrading to my filming setup to make this planning class like as engaging and interactive as possible. So not only do I have my DSLR right here capturing me in HD, right? So hopefully everything looks great. Um, I also have, let me show you here. I also have an HD webcam that is also set up that's going to give you guys a bird's eye view of my planner while we are going through this process. And then I also have my normal FaceTime camera on my computer that is going to give us a third view. Now, I'm not really going to use this view, I don't think. I'm going to stick to the DSLR and the overhead, but just in case something happens with the DSLR, because this is my first time like actually using this, so I just wanted to make sure you guys had like a backup just in case. So this is going to be like the main view, but really I think once we get into this class, we're actually going to be in um, the overview for most of this. So basically I tell you guys all of this to show you guys that what I've got going on right now is a pretty complicated setup. And so if you see me looking away from this camera, um, just know it's because I have like a whole behind the scenes, like, I don't know what you call this. There's like a little control 
center here on my computer. So this is where I'm able to see your comments and reactions and be able to control this stream. So we're getting it at the best quality as possible and having the best interaction as possible. So I am seeing some names that I definitely am recognizing here in my comments. I'm so excited to see you all. Um, and everyone is saying that everything looks good. So I'm glad to hear that. That means that we can get started um, on today's topic on today's plan with me class. And I know that's why you guys are all here. So thank you so much for joining me. Make sure if you haven't yet to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up button. And it is not too late to go ahead and share this video um, with your friends and family. Drop a link on Instagram or drop a link on Facebook or tweet it out. Definitely still time to invite more people to the event. Make sure we have as many people as possible because you know me, I always think that sharing is caring with this community. And the more people we can get involved, the more ideas and strategies and just like more fun we're going to have together. And I really want today's video to be as fun as possible and as informative as possible. But obviously this isn't the same as one of my like normal videos, right? It's not going to be as profesh, although this setup is legit, you guys. Like this setup is legit right now. I feel like a pro streamer, but this has all been done in order to help serve you guys the best content that I possibly can. So if it becomes a little bit more informal, good. That's what I want this to be. I want this to be way more informal, way more chatty. Now, let me explain to you how I'm going to run today's class really quickly. Um, I'm going to get started by walking you through, kind of like teaching you, walking you through my process for the mid-year review and explaining you what it is, how I do it, you know, why we want to do it, all that jazz. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with this concept or some form of this concept. Um, so I just want to walk you guys through as quickly as possible, like my five-step process for how to go through this mid-year review process. And then we're going to go ahead and we are going to actually have like a live plan with me. So what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is I'm going to switch over to our overview camera. So you guys will be able to see my desk. And do you guys like the placement of where my face is on that on that screen? If you guys want me to change it, let me know. But I think it's all it's doing is covering my coffee. Um, so I think we're going to have a really good view of the desk, you guys right now take a drink of something if you guys have something to drink. So I make sure I'm awake and alert, I'm properly hydrated for this. So um, yeah, so this is what the setup is going to be for most of this. You'll be able to see me. I'll be doing some clicking in and out. You guys will be able to see me and interact. And of course, throughout this whole process, um, feel free to ask me questions and things like that. While I'm doing this initial um, chat about the mid-year review, I'm probably not going to be watching the comments as much, but feel free to leave comments. I'll try to scroll through. Hopefully this system makes it a little easier for me to, you know, give you guys shout outs and, you know, leave your comments and, and answer your comments, really answer your questions and comments as we go through. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump right in to the mid-year review process. So what is the mid-year review process? So a mid-year review is essentially a review of our plans, our goals, objectives for the year that we do at the mid-year mark. So today is the last day of June, which means we're halfway through 2019 and we've got a whole second half to go. So if you're someone who has set goals like I have or objectives or, you know, even if it wasn't a formal goal setting process at the beginning of the year, you did something, you set some goals, you set some objectives, you had some ideas in your head for what you wanted to achieve. Hopefully you wrote them out formally. Um, but if not, if you had something, you know, mapped out in your planner or ideas in your planner, this is an opportunity for you to determine if you're how much progress you've made on those things uh, to determine you know if you're on track for actually accomplishing them if you even want to still accomplish them and of course like if there's anything else that you want to do instead now I realize that we're halfway through the year and it's not New Year's time and you guys if you've been following me you know I think time is a construct right I know it's so easy for us to think at New Year's that we should be setting our goals and expectations for the year then but you could do it at any time, you guys, and the mid-year mark, I think, is a great time to purposely sit down and refresh and take a look at your objectives to make sure you're still in alignment with everything because there's nothing I hate more than feeling like, A, I haven't made progress on something when really if I do some digging, I can see that I have. And there's also nothing worse than continuing to work on things. Like nothing's more of a productivity time suck than continuing to work on things that don't really mean anything to you. Like their meaning isn't important. You don't actually need to get them done. I feel like a lot of times in life, 
we have a lot of expectations on us and sometimes even expectations we set for ourselves, even if they've changed, we still feel the need to follow through. So feel free to let me know, you know, if that resonates with you, definitely resonates with me. I'm definitely someone who, although I get a lot done and I execute very quickly, I change my mind on things all the time. Like I get halfway through or mostly through a project and then I go, you know what, this isn't what I want it to be. This isn't what I need. And actually, I think I have a better idea. So I'm going to shelve this and I'm going to work on what's really important to me. And I think there's nothing wrong with that, right? The problem would only come if we keep switching gears way too much. So the mid-year review process gives us an opportunity to stop and reflect and just make sure we have a good direction for the rest of the year. Because whether or not it is New Year's or mid-year mark or even at the end of the year, we have we can just do something fresh, start something new, be productive at any moment. So don't feel like because half of the year is gone, even if you haven't made very much progress, that you can't make progress. Honestly, the way that I look at, you know, and and maybe if you guys are familiar with my planning process, and we'll get into this in a little bit, you know, I really think of the year in terms of almost like quarters, right? Like, what am I focused on this quarter? What am I focused on next quarter? So for me, I have two quarters of the year left. You know what I mean? Even though you haven't, maybe if you haven't made as much progress or any progress on something you wanted to achieve by this point, hello, wake up call. We can totally like get our butts in gear and get it done because there is so much time left. And then of course, you know, there's no ending point, right? That new year mark doesn't really change anything. Time's a construct. So um, we can definitely get this going right now. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Like I said, that five-step process for doing the mid-year review. So the first step of the mid-year review is to do a brain dump. And if you're not familiar with what a brain dump is, um, I will just tell you quickly that it is essentially when you sit down and you write out all of the things that you're thinking of in your head, all the plans, ideas, information that you're just holding onto in your head, hoping that you're just going to remember, and actually writing them down on paper. So that you have, one, all that information out of your brain. I know a lot of people think that your brain is for storage. Your brain is not for storage at all. Uh, Your brain is for processing. So think of, if you're thinking in computer lingo, your brain is not a hard drive, it's a RAM, okay? So sometimes this is called a RAM dump as well. So what does this look like for me? I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys. I actually already have been started my brain dump. Sometimes this takes me a couple of days. I generally will do this over a couple of days because sometimes it does take a little bit of a while to unpack things from your brain. But as you can see, I use like a brain dump page like in my planner where I will just write a whole bunch of things down. And then what I like to do is use, I call this organize and act, um, this quadrant system. It comes, I learned about this from Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People book, but I've also heard it called an Eisenhower matrix, but then I've also been researched and said that it was Ben Franklin came up with this. So someone more intelligent and older than I has come up with this. It's not mine, but it's absolutely an idea that I integrate and is really important for my planning because when you do a brain dump, right, you know, and this is actually maybe to some people you'll look at this and be like, this is not enough paper to, you know, house all of my ideas and things that I'm holding on to my brain, which is absolutely true. If you're someone who does not do this process regularly, you probably have much more you're holding on to. Um, but essentially it can become overwhelming when you do a brain dump. So, um, you know, because what will end up happening is you end up having like a whole page or 10 pages, right. Of information notes of things that you want to do. Um, and you know, ideas, just like snippets of things, just snippets of things that are just stuck in your brain and the Eisenhower matrix, right. This quadrant system over here helps you to actually determine what is a priority, right? So there's like two, um, there's called columns up and down columns, Lexus, important and not important, and then rows across urgent and not urgent. So basically you'll be able to take everything in your brain dump and then put it into one of these quadrants. And this helps you to determine like what you need to get done now, which would be important and urgent, um, what you could defer or delegate, right? Which would be urgent, but not important to you, right? So if something's urgent, like maybe you need to have like someone else do it, right? But it's just not important to you. It's not like one of your objectives. So maybe you just have to pass it on. Then important, but not urgent is something you could totally schedule into your planner for a little bit longer down the line. And then not important and not urgent is something that you could just like consider either a deleting, right? Just completely deleting or, um, you know, putting it on like a Sunday maybe list. So the reason we want to do this first is because when we have all of our, all of these ideas and things out of our head, it actually gives our brain a lot more space to actually process and plan, right? So this is why this is the first step. When it comes to anything planning related, usually doing a brain dump is my number one step. So do your brain dump, 
get everything out of your head that you're holding on to. And really that's going to help make it easier for you to reference information. It's going to make it easier for you to process information as you're going through this, this process and make decisions. Cause I feel like, does anyone else kind of get like decision fatigue or like when it comes to setting goals or even, even just making plans, you're like, I don't know what to do. Like you don't feel like you can see clearly. I often think that that is partly a byproduct of just having too much in your brain. Like it's just clogged, you know, it's like a clogged, I don't want to say a clogged toilet, sink, sink drain sink drains, ice cream machine got clogged. It's like more pleasant, right? Because it's the summer. Okay, good. Um, okay, so that is step one, perform your brain dump. Now, step number two is to reconcile your old tasks, okay? So what you're going to be doing in step number two is to, as it says, go through your planner and make sure that you have everything checked off that you have done so that you know what is done and what is left to do, right? So I, I do this every once in a while where I will go through, um, I do try to do this like, you'd think that you do this, like you probably, if you're like me, you probably think you do this more often than you might actually do it. I sometimes have to like tell myself like, okay, we have to like go through and just check. But in my planner, I'll go through like my weeks and I will go through my projects and I will see like, have I checked these things off yet? You know, like making sure that everything is, everything that's been written down as a task um, has been completed, right? So that will actually end up showing you that you've gotten way more done than you've even probably expected, right? This is a great way to track when you actually go back and check things off. Because sometimes, you know, although we have a planner and we make little check boxes, sometimes we're not always the best at checking things off. So this is your opportunity to reconcile your old tasks. Um, so this will make it easier for you again to like see the progress you've made, understand, you know, what's complete, maybe something's more close to being complete than you expected. Um, it's just a really great practice to, to undergo during this whole process. Okay. So then we get to step number three. Oops. Oops. That one. Step number three, <laughs> step number three is to review your goals and plans to check your progress, make sure again, that what you said you wanted to do is still something you want to do, um, and see how much, you know, you've actually gotten accomplished in the first half of the year. So for this, I want to show you that I actually went ahead and just wrote out my goals and kind of like what I've gotten done this year so far and like things that I know need to be done this year onto these worksheets that were part of like my, one of my goal setting. Um, it was a goal setting work, not workbook, not worksheet, workshop. Jeez Louise. So it was part of a goal setting workshop. I set uh, my hat at New Year's. So I don't normally, like I didn't fill these out for myself necessarily, but I just wanted to have something for you guys to actually look at. So let's go ahead and look at my 2019 goals first, okay? And we'll go through these and I'm actually going to give you an idea of like how things have gone gone along. Mm. So on um, the top, I just had like a word or a theme for the year. My theme for this year has been manifestation. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that today. Let's move into what the goals are. So when I do my goals, I always first set priorities in my life. So these are priorities like I call upper uh, uppercase P priorities. So these are going to be people, institutions, um, just like really big ideas that I will set goals against. So priority number one is me. Always put yourself first. It's very important. No matter how selfish it is, it feels it's not. You, you are the center of your universe. And if you are not taken care of, no one else gets taken care of. So my three goals for 2019 were number one, to hit my goal weight. Um, you guys know that like two years ago, I lost a whole bunch of weight. And then last year, I put a little bit on, um, and I need to kind of go back. So right now, I'm, I'm basically back. I'm, I've hit like, I'm very close to hitting like a second goal within this hit weight goal, uh, hit goal weight process. So I, I well, hit third. I, I kind of like made myself like kind of like stretch goals. Like this is the first place I want to be. This is the second place I want to be. This is the third place I want to be. This is the end goal, right? So I've gotten like, I'd say the first two are definitely done and I'm very close to hitting the third. And then I've got the fourth, right? So as far as I'm concerned, this is in progress and I'm doing well on it. And it's still something that I want to do. 
Goal number two is to complete my alchemy philosophy. Um, now that doesn't sound very clear as a goal. What does that mean? Essentially, if you guys have been following my channel, you guys know that I now consider myself an alchemist. I'm very focused on this idea of manifestation that to me is, it just glides together so perfectly with, with the point of productivity. And if you guys have never seen my like productivity alchemy video on YouTube, definitely check that out because it kind of explains this. But you know, I've been going through this process of really trying to create my own pr productivity philosophy, or at least like my own synthesized unique view and philosophy on it that stems from ancient alchemy. And I'm doing good on that too. Like this is one of the reasons where I think I share with you guys a lot, you know, the books that I'm reading and um, the research that I'm doing and a lot of these tube cast episodes that I've been doing on my channel are related to these concepts. So for me, I actually feel like I'm in a really good place right about the last like 30 days. I feel really good about this because I've made like some really big aha strides and big aha moments for myself. So this is going really good. Um, it's not something, you know, developing your own personal philosophy and something is definitely not something that you can just like easily create a project plan on, but I'm doing what I can on this, which incorporates me doing a lot of research and reading, a lot of thinking, a lot of talking to people, which is one of the reasons I do this tube cast is because the, the tube cast, not this one, but um, to really get my ideas out because it really helps me to develop my philosophy and figure out where I'm missing things and where I need to add, you know, where I need to add things in and stuff like that. So that's doing good too. Not complete, but it's doing good. Um, goal number three is to read 48 books this year. I have read 21 books so far and I have six that are in progress. So I think that's great because half of 48 is what, 24? So I'm at 21 finished and then six that are like in progress. Um, I'm the kind of person who, and I, I don't read books as much as I listen to books on tape. I talk about this all the time, uh, but I have to read like a bunch of them. Like I listen to a bunch of them at one time. A lot of it has to do with research because I'm reading like a lot of these sorts of like heavy books, sometimes like very dense things like Carl Jung. Like you can't just sit there and just like relax listening to it. Like it's an episode of Twilight or something, you know, like it's heavy and I have to take notes. So I go in between a lot of different books. So that goal, awesome. Totally on track. Priority number two is my business, okay? So for my business, I have a monthly income goal that I'm trying to hit consistently this year. I've hit it a few times, but it's not perfect, right? So I consider this in progress. And that's kind of why I put like this slash here. This was just for my own reference as I was talking to you guys. So like I made sure I knew what my progress was ahead of time so I could talk to you. Um, so yeah, monthly income goal, in progress, making strides. All I can ask for that's good. Good enough for me. Second goal is to reach a hundred thousand on YouTube. I really feel like we're, we're within the, we're in the, we're within like range of this, right? Like I'm at 86. I'm at 86. And it's really funny because I really don't set a lot of goals to like where I want my followings to be. Um, I am not someone who like feels like I am a traditional YouTuber and I'm like, YouTube is not the place I want to spend all my time and energy, but I've been on YouTube for 10 years, you guys, and I feel like I've done a really great job. Some people might look at my channel and be like, you've been on YouTube for 10 years and that's all you have. There was a lot of time, energy, research, um, and just like, you know, preparation that goes into YouTube. And I have never been in the mindset that I'm like a full-time YouTuber. So maybe it's been different for me, but, um, you know, 100K, I would like to hit it just kind of to have as like a consolation prize. You know what I mean? Like, Alexis, you did it. You were on YouTube for 10 years. How many people do anything for 10 years, you know? So if you guys are watching this, please feel free to share my channel with other people that you think might find it interesting. Don't send it to like people who have no interest in this stuff. But if you have other people, talk about my channel, share it, because I really would love to hit it this year. But if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. In progress, because, you know, I'm pretty close. It could happen. Goal number three is to write a productivity book. You guys have been asking me for a productivity book for years. And I have so, like, I have started writing, um, like, three books, like, three versions of it. My problem right now is that because I'm so focused as well on my alchemy philosophy, that things get really blurred for me right now. And it's just, like, a lot going on in my mind at one time and just, like, a lot of energy and excitement over topics. But it's hard to just, like, sit and focus. Now, have I sat and, like, said, okay, this is the month I'm going to write my book? I actually haven't executed on anything like that. Um, I have written books in the past. I don't know if you guys are familiar with my backstory, but I did NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writing Month for several years, like I think 2008, 2009. 
that time I was even like an ML, which is like a municipal liaison, which meant I ran a group for my area. Um, so I do know how to like sit down and focus on writing, but I just have like, again, so many balls in the air, so many ideas. And I don't, I'm the kind of person who I don't want to like put out a book that I don't feel like is fully where I want it to be sort of a thing. I think you guys can relate to that, um, in some sense, maybe not with writing a book, but I think that's like a common feeling. Um, so again, in progress, not done yet. It could get done by the end of the year. I I'm not keeping my fingers, I'm not holding my breath for it. I'll keep my fingers crossed, but I won't hold my breath for it. <laughs> so priority number three is family. So goal for that one was to redistribute my household responsibilities, which is done. Like that's actually been done, which is thank goodness. Um, you know, when it comes to like household things, sometimes one person has like more to do than the other and it just feels overwhelming. And then you kind of get to, you know, cause a strife. So you need to have a good household responsibility divide, right? And if you're the mom there that's like doing everything for everyone in your household and you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed and you don't feel like you can do anything for yourself, please take a moment to realize that you are very important. And like I said earlier, you should be your number one priority, even if that just means that you're just going to take care of your basic needs so that you can be the best mom and wife and friend and sister and daughter that you could possibly be. Um, so I definitely think, you know, see if you can share on your responsibilities with other people because people are usually more than welcome to help take on responsibilities when they understand that someone is in need of help. So definitely consider that. But yeah, that was one of my things done. Number two, the second goal was kind of like, has been a goal for the last couple of years. And it was just kind of like, is this going to happen? I don't know. It's not something that I feel like you can really legitimately plan, but get Starbucks a sibling. If you've been following me on Instagram, which if you're not, what are you doing? You should be following me on Instagram at Miss Trenchcoat. Just popping that up on screen for you. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. But I did recently um, rescue, uh, adopt, it's a rescue, um, a dog. And now Starbuck has a brother. We've been like looking at different dogs through a rescue for a few years and nothing fit, like worked out for us. So he now has his brother. Check that off the list. And then goal number three for the family is more pack time. Check. I think we've done a really good job of that this year. Priority four for me is my home. Um, I need to get a new roof on my house, okay? So if anyone owns homes, you will understand like this feeling. Um, the new roof is partly in because we had something happen earlier this year where part of the roof needed to get done. And what I actually ended up doing, which I mean, I don't think it's a big deal. Like how many people see this, birds and planes, but I wanted to change my roof tile. So half of my, not half, part of my house has a different color shingles, right? Than the rest of the house. So I want to get the new the new part put in as soon as possible. Now, this kind of got a little bit deferred because um, just like last month, there was our AC crapped out. So the AC was completely redone. So money that could have gone to a roof had to go to an air conditioning. So, you know, this is how it is owning a home so much fun. But luckily, you know, the roof itself that we want to replace, it's old, it needs to be replaced soon. It's not like it needs to be done and we're not doing it and there's leaks. Um, so that's just kind of like a household goal. Number two, I want to update my office a little bit. I have been slowly doing this, um, but the next thing I need is like, I want a much bigger desk and I need a new chair because I've had this chair for years and it's really getting, it's actually broken. I can't like lift it up anymore, which is why if you like see me like getting up and like sitting up or anything, it's because I'm trying to put myself higher up because the chair doesn't lift anymore. Um, then say, uh, goal number three is a savings goal. I've talked about this in a video earlier this year. Um, and then priority number five, friends and relationships. Me and my girlfriends, we call ourselves the babes that brunch. Basically, brunch regularly, do things regularly. Kind of in progress, kind of done it. We have been doing things regularly. Maybe not as much as we'd like, but, you know, sometimes life gets in the way, so you can't always go out for brunch with your girlfriends as much as you wanted to. Um, then goal number two is to take a trip with my girlfriends um, or our friend group in general, girls and guys, would be the ideal. Um, I've already taken a trip partially like I consider it partially done because I already took a trip to visit one of my girlfriends in Boston and um but we're kind of like looking into maybe doing something later this year like as a group um and then oh my girlfriends my business mastermind girlfriends keeping in touch with them doing the, again in progress doing as best I can not not mad at it right okay okay so um that those are my goals for 2019. 
right? And so obviously I had projects and things that went along with these goals or some of them, not all of them had like a project breakdown per se. So this is how my year has gone already. And I hope this is helpful for you guys seeing this. Let me know in the comments if you guys like seeing this stuff broken out like this, or if this is just like too much, um, because I'll move on. But essentially for every month of the year, I have like a focus, like three things that I'm focused against. Um, so January, February, March, April, May, June, that's where we are now. I had, um, you know, fit, you know, tasks laid out that I needed to do. And I try not to fill out my focuses for the month too far in advance, unless I know something needs to be done during a certain month. So for example, in November, holiday promo, it says, right? And that's because Black Friday and the holiday season starts. So when I do my holiday promo, it's going to be worked on in November. Um, my 2020 inserts, I, I moved them into November. So they're part of the holiday promo. I had them in October at one point. December, you know, New Year's goal setting, promoting my You Got This Workbook because it's all goal setting related. That would be the time for me to focus on that. But as you can see, like some of my focuses I got done. Like January, I got all three of my focuses done. February, I did two of them. I didn't do the third one. March, I don't, it's like part of me doesn't know what happened in March. Then part of me remembers what happened in March vaguely. Um, I didn't get anything done in March. My, my transmission blew on my car. It was my birth month. I ended up taking like a mental health month basically. And it felt very good and actually really helped with my comeback basically in April, which was really good. So April got two of the things done. I didn't get my videos. I wasn't back on track with my videos so much in April. Um, May, Everything got done. June, two of the three things got done. One of them is still in progress. And so, you know, you may want to think about taking every month of the year and breaking down to like at least three, like, you know, three focuses for that month specifically. And actually, I want to show you how this correlates to my planner as well. With my project sheet right here. Yeah, you guys can see that. Um, Essentially, all those focuses are would go in here into my monthly things. And you can see how like some things, well, what ended up happening here, if things look empty, I actually had, I actually ended up making a sticker and putting it over my original one because I don't think you can see underneath, but there's all right. Like I changed the plans like 7,000 times. And because this is a printable planner, like I'm used to, I just had to like cover it up. So by the time I like redid this whole thing after messing it up, when I did my comeback in like May, um, in April, I, um, I just needed to have a refresh. So then I started laying things out here, but this is like where things would be laid out in here. And then I also lay them out on my monthly. And then of course, I also have things that I'm working on for like a quarter. Like I said, I like to focus like my energy on like what's gonna get done this quarter. Like what's the theme of this quarter? Like the theme of this quarter was funnels. The theme of next quarter is gonna be a uh, like a, a product and a repackage. And then I have the two halves of the year and so far, like I haven't had like a lot of things that I was focusing on for like half of a year at a time. So for me, it's just been like this concept of like creating content upgrades, like just like freebies for you guys to download that help you guys like as little tools that I can give you that also help me with marketing. So I've gotten a lot of things there done and I've had to move some things forward because now we're at the end of the month and you know, it's, this isn't going to get done here. The planner piece update. I want to update this masterclass really bad. It'll probably get done in like the next month or two, but um, if you guys are familiar with my Planner Piece Masterclass, amazing masterclass that I did for free on YouTube, and I just wanna update it because so much has changed since I made that, and I have so much more to say now. So yeah, so these are my focuses for there. So my project planning like is not, you know, it's very, very minimal, very direct. Like I don't like to overwhelm myself with things. I have this rule that for every period of time, I only put up to three things in the box, right? Because I feel like that's a lot of things to focus on at one time. Like even three things might be hard for some people. And then three, you know, quarterly things and then three things for the half, it becomes like nine things that you could be working on. So I try to keep it as minimal as possible um, just to be. And then this is really just overly minimalized right now because of the whole having to just like make a blank slate essentially. Okay. So that is, um, you know, my process for, you know, looking at my goals, determining what I want. What is it that I still want for the year moving ahead? Um, and actually, let's see. Yeah. So if you didn't set goals, this would be like a nice way to set goals. Okay. 
Yeah, these inserts came from, like I said, they came from a work shop that I did earlier this year. So they're not available anymore. But if you sign up for the 2020 goal setting workshop, keep an eye out for that, then you'll get the 2020 version of these. So they're not something that's available right now. Um, so what are we going to do? Okay, let's go ahead and we've reviewed where we're at. I've already kind of done this in my in my planner. So we'll go ahead and move on to number four, which is step number four of this process, which is to redefine your targets or refine your targets, right? So after looking at all of this information that I have here, do I still want these goals? Yes or no? Are there new goals that I want to add in? Yes or no? And what am I going to be doing for the next month, the next few months that I might want to put on my list as projects, right? So these are just like projects that will help me reach my goal. So let's see. Okay. We'll go back to this because I'll give you an idea of how we're going to be doing for July. Okay. So like I said, I don't want to change anything here. Like this is good. I'm there. Nothing has changed here. I'm really happy with all of this, which, you know, it's very possible that someone may want to change like maybe I'd want to change something but I'm not going to I, I'm happy with this like I'm, and again this wasn't just done in January like I said I kind of redid everything like a quarter ago again so it's I'm actually good with this I'm feeling good with this so what do I need to do in July um okay so there are a few things that I want to do in July in order to help me reach my goals number one instead of committing to like one video a week I'm really trying to commit to two videos a week now <laughs> And this is obviously related to that goal of getting to 100K on YouTube, right? So obviously increasing my YouTube videos, making better videos, making better content like this, it's going to be part of that. And then, okay, so that's for that goal. <sighs> I also really feel like I need to, oh, you know what, this is an easy one. Okay, this project that I thought I was going to have done in June is going to need to be done in July. You guys will learn more about that later. And then I also, should I try to write my book? <laughs> write for your book. Uh, I'll try to do it. I'm gonna try to write for the book. Now that doesn't mean I'm writing a whole book that month, but I need to like actually schedule in. Here, let me see, what do I want? What do I actually want this to look like, this project? It's probably gonna end up looking like I wanna schedule one weekly writing session, right? Because that's the only way I'm going to get this done is if I sit down and commit to like writing once a month, um, once a week, I'm sorry. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's what's going to be done in July. Like I said, I don't like to go too far ahead on these um, unless I know there's stuff that needs to be done. But you know what? Well, something that I know needs to be done eventually, well, there's my 2020 inserts are here. What needs to be done? Like I need to do like my 2020 master planner. Mm, let's do, I'm gonna just write this in here. Just as like, this can always change, right? My master planner, I want, I was hoping to get like the community involved with the 2020 update, like in terms of like the covers and just making some tweaks to the interior. So I might slate that for August just so it's like, you know what, don't worry about it. in July and August is fine because they're yearly planners anyway. And I put out my 2020, like my printer bolt inserts at the end of the year, because there's no reason in having them in September. Like you can just get them at the end of the year and instantly download them and print them. You just need enough, like, you know, enough time. You need to give people enough time to like print them out before the year starts and like put them in their planner. So I keep those to the end of the year. Yeah, I think, I think that's probably going to be it you know, for like things that I know I absolutely want to schedule. Okay. So I think that's going to be it for what things I want to schedule. Okay. So that is the process of redefining, refining your targets. What is it that you want to change? Do you need to change goals? What do you want to change? And then what are you going to be working on for the upcoming month for July or in the upcoming months that you know probably won't change? So then finally, Step number five of this process is to actually put this all in your planner. And this is where we're going to start our plan with me. Formally, we're going to be starting our, our plan with me here, and I'll be able to actually interact with you guys a little bit more. 
now that I'm at this stage. So does anyone really quickly, before we start planning, have any questions for me that they would like to get answered? Because if not, we will start jumping into the plan with me where you guys will just go ahead and watch me plan and see how this looks. And I even have like some stickers. <laughs> These are my stickers that I make and use for myself. But yeah, let's see. I'm going to go through the questions real quick. People said it's helpful. You love how I'm doing it. People are sharing their Instagram. Excellent. Uh, my cheetah print watch band is from Inst uh, Instagram. Where is it from? Amazon. Um, Penny says I'm in, oh goodness, I'm bad with states. Is that Wisconsin? <laughs> and cannot seem to commit to a planner for longer than a week. Maybe one planner July challenge. Yeah, that could be a good idea. Plan but why can you not commit to a planner for longer than a week? Or do you have shiny object syndrome? If you have not seen my video that's like, five things that are keeping you from planner peace. It may be shiny object syndrome. If you're always changing your planner, it's just, this is like the idea that like, you're just going to commit to one planner and that's it. So I definitely would recommend that video to you because if you're someone who is trying to use a different planner every week, that's so not productive because you're going to need to be transferring information from place to place to place and things are going to get lost in the shuffle. Absolutely. Um, Someone said, Sarah says, I'd love to learn more about your ancient alchemy. Do you have a video on it? My TubeCast series is all about my alchemy philosophies. Um, I don't really like, in the last one, I did kind of explain to you guys that that's what it was about, but some of them are, um, I kind of am just leaving it because I feel like when some people hear the word alchemy, they like don't want to listen anymore. So I want to just leave it as like, this is information for you. It's based on the alchemy things that I've researched and like universal truths that I'm studying and researching and, and testing in my own life. So all of those are alchemy related. And then I also have a video on productivity alchemy that it kind of is a good intro to this. And then I also have a video on, I would definitely recommend the brain states video. So write those down, go look through my channel. There's lots. Um, I already addressed the printables. Yes, they'll be part of my 2020 New Year's goal setting workshop. So if you join that workshop, you will get those as part of the event. Okay, I'm just checking to see if there's any. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me see if there's any new info that came in. Uh, Hanar says it's difficult for me doing a brain dump. I tend to keep it all in my brain, which is why you want to brain dump regularly. Like I tend to brain dump on a monthly basis, but if you're someone who like feels like they have a hard time writing things down, um, like throughout the month, I would do it at least once a week. Um, and don't stop doing one until like you feel like it's all out. Can I keep using the brain dump trigger list from you got this workbook? Absolutely. And if you guys are interested as well, I think if you do not already have like the sample pages of my planner. I do have, are they in the same? I think they're in the sample pages of the planner. Did I say this? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, the sample pages of the planner are in the toolbox, the productivity toolbox, which is linked down below, which is just a free toolbox that you can get from me. You sign up, you get the toolbox and, um, it has sample inserts of my planner and some other goodies as well. Okay. Uh, someone said head went down to work and I completely missed what step four was. Just going back really quickly. Step four was to redefine your targets. Okay. So you're going to go through, after you've reviewed your progress, you're going to redefine or refine your targets. So if you need to change a goal or if you need to change some projects you're working on, this is the time to do it. Or if you need to add things, this is the time to do it. Oh, good. Someone else answered. Okay. I should have read that. Um, Uh, someone said, I would love to learn more about how you decide to take something off your plate and replace it with something else in terms of entrepreneurship. So that's not going to be something we're going to talk about today, but I will tell you, Arizona Life Coach, that um, I, do you guys remember a few years, how many of you have been with me like years ago when I used to do those like monthly glampire chats and I would do my plan like an entrepreneur videos. Now that I have this set up like this, I feel like I want to go live at least once a month on YouTube 
probably sometime during the week, like maybe Wednesday nights. Again, I think I used to do it at like seven or eight or nine o'clock on Wednesdays and talk about online business stuff, right? Because I've realized that it's confusing for you guys in my community that I talk about like productivity and planning and I talk about entrepreneurship. Obviously, if you followed my journey and there's many of you guys who I know are completely like up to date on this, although I don't really expect people to be like really up to date on like what I'm doing and what's going on with me. But um, you guys will know that like my business grew out of my love for productivity and planning. And so I feel like sharing that information is applicable to you guys as well, because as I started building my business, I got lots and lots and lots of questions about it. And so many people tell me, even though I'm not like a business coach, right? I don't label myself as a business coach. I do sell business courses. Um, People always tell me that the way that I teach and the information that I give is so like direct and actionable that it's very helpful. So I had been doing like more regular videos on the subject of entrepreneurship. But then what ends up happening is I kind of get like a rise from the people who are not entrepreneurs in my community who are like, just do planner things. And it becomes like, I have to balance it out. So I realize that's like a me problem, like not your problem. Cause I understand there's a lot of people who watch me who like some of you want to watch me for planner videos. Some of you want to watch me for productivity. Some of you might want to watch me for alchemy now. Like some of you want to watch me for online business. And this channel is just for me to like share what I know about everything that I think is important for me to share with you across anything that I'm interested in. So that is, you know, something that I want to do. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely hit me up, leave me comments, et cetera. Because if I think I probably am going to end up going live and doing like business chats again, I don't know what we'll call it, but maybe it'll be planned like an entrepreneur again, where I'll be able to talk about business things. Cause I know that, you know, I don't share a ton about my business. Um, so that would be better, I think, and a good way for me to kind of like, kind of like coach you guys virtually. Um, okay. So you guys love the step-by-step. -step. You're good. Everything's good for you guys. Excellent. Okay. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is take this off and we're going to go ahead and start planning then. Okay. Everyone take a sip of water or drink, whatever you got. hydrate yourself. Um, and I'm going to go ahead into July in my planner. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Nice, fresh week. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually take, oh, this is where it's going to become like a little OCD-ish here. Cause like I'm going to decorate a little bit, but you know what I want to do? I know what I want to do. I know what I want to do. Um, first thing I'm going to do is write those focuses in here. But I have a specific stickers I want to use for them right now. And like I said, these are all sticker designs that come from my shop. Um, just go browse the designs. They're print on demand. And I've added like the JPEGs. So if you're someone who like me has a silhouette or a Cricut and you know how to use that, you can take the JPEGs and make them at home and make them stickery. Yeah, this is the one I wanted to do. Okay. I wanted these ones. I think these guys fit here. So these are like my three objectives I'm gonna put in here. It's gonna be some overlap, guys. So now feel free to break out your planner. And if you guys have more questions, I'm gonna be able to look up a little bit more and it's okay. That kind of looks cute. Okay, whatever. Not the end of the world. Do you see me like not trying to be OCD about my planner right now? It's not the end of the world, Alexis. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Like you've got like makeup stains in here from like touching your planner. Um, okay, so what are we doing for July? Okay, so these are the, the three goals, focuses, objectives for the month. Hmm. Part of two, two YouTube videos a week. Uh, do instant income this month and write for the book. Again, what that looks like is one session a week, right? And like a session will be like maybe like two to four hours, whatever I can muster up. Better than nothing, right? Okay. <clears throat> so those are the three things we're going to do. Oh, you know what? Did I ever put them on the project page? Let's put them on the project page too. This really should be here <laughs> as well. Okay. 
Now, what else do I need to do? Okay, next thing I need to do is fill in appointments and such on the monthly. I'm literally just narrating to you what I'm doing. Where are my other ones? Stay, thank you. Okay, tomorrow I have two things I need to do. Number one, are these like way too big for this? No, I don't think so. I'll do number two. I really like using like little icon stickers in my monthly. And what this relates to here, I gotta give the dog their meds dog meds and then I have a doctor's appointment at 2 p.m. okay um, Thursday is July 4th let's do a strike tart for that day Okay. Uh, what else are monthly things? Oh, my. Do I comes for that? I like to track the days I have certain bills. I don't really have like a great icon for those though. Yeah, maybe I can use these little. Yeah, I use the little rings. Mm -hmm. That's because they need a reminder for me. Okay, what day are my bills due? <laughs> my bills are due on. I have a bill due on Saturday, the 6th. I have a bill due on, I think it's the 20th, yeah. Most of my bills and stuff are like auto pay, but there are three that I actually have to go in and pay. Boom. Next. I think that's it for like my appointments this week, um, this month. Um, then let's go to the front here. I've got my calendar for astrological things. <laughs> so I'm going to go in and put in like the new moon and the full moon. The new moon is coming up like in the next few days. Let's see. In July here, the second is the new moon, which what I do here is I just draw like a circle that's filled in. That means new moon. Then the full moon is on the 16th, and then there's another new moon. Okay, on that. Okay, 16 and 31. 16 is a full moon. 31 is a new, another new moon. Okay. And Mercury retrograde starts the 8th and goes to the end of the month. Okay. it over here that means it ends okay next thing I need to do is I mark my content so I do my videos on Wednesdays and Sundays so Wednesday now has become the tube cast day and I know a lot of people have been asking me about like will you do a podcast will you do a podcast um, I will do a podcast if this tube cast thing does well. Um, I just think it's a lot. And I think you guys, I, I, not you guys, like, like you guys, like I'm accusing you, but I feel like a lot of people in like pe other in influencers communities, right? People who are online, social media, people's communities. I think they take it, maybe take it a little bit for granted that it takes a while to do content and it's a lot to manage different platforms. And so I don't want to start a podcast before I am a hundred percent sure I want to keep doing it. So that's why I'm doing the tube cast on the YouTube channel for now because that is a way that I can first give it to people where I've got like the biggest following anyway. Um, and 
a lot of people have said that they actually watch my videos, like they turn them on and just listen to them. Um, so, you know, it can work, right? It can work like that. So for now, I'm doing it on YouTube. And if I feel like, you know what, I am, I feel like I'm going to be committed to this, like I've got the groove of it, then I'll put it on a podcast. Um, it's just like a lot to have to manage different places and different formats and things like that. Do I have more comments and I'm just stuck on this? Because I keep, oh, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Because I pulled up, it stuck me on that page. Okay. Can you recommend some good books on alchemy? Yeah. Um, I just read The Corpus Hermeticum. Um, Emerald Tablet, that's basically one liner, in, in, integrated like many different ways. Um, let's see. Oh, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Um, and then there's like a lot of books that, you see, there's like The Ancient Study of Alchemy and then there is, we'll call it New Age Thought, right? That is basically the same thing, but no one, no one uses the word alchemy anymore, really. So a book that I listen to on Audible, and it's an Audible exclusive, and this is probably the best book that I've listened to on this topic because I've listened to so many books in the last few years on, we would say, like alchemical principles. Reality Unveiled by Ziad Masri. And this book, it's an Audible exclusive, like I said, it's an audio book, did an amazing job of actually nothing, there was basically nothing that he said in that book that I was not already familiar with the studies and the information that he referenced, but he put them, I read them in like other books as well, but he put them together in such a way that I'm like, this is like the perfect way to present all this information. Like if I was going to present information to you on alchemy, like it would have been the way he did it. Like he took some of the best studies, the best information and put it out so that there's like universal truths for you to follow in there. Um, so that's, you know, there's a lot of different books like that. Like I'll have to go into it. Maybe I'll probably have to make like a whole video about the books that I've read. Um, but those are some for you to read. Like read The Alchemist first. So like that's the most basic one. Uh, the Corpus Hermeticum, that is like an actual ancient hermetic text, alchemical text. And then the Kabbalion, that's another one. That is another one. That book is essentially taken the information from the Corpus Hermeticum and a lot of other ancient texts on, on alchemy and outlined the basic principles of the universe. So I know maybe if you guys are familiar with these concepts, you may be familiar with law of attraction. Um, law of attraction is a concept that is part of one of the seven hermetic principles. So when people are like all about law of attraction, I'm like, you're all about part of one seventh of a bigger picture. <laughs> like it's, it, there's more going on there. So, um, that is why I don't talk about law of attraction so much. I mean, I, I'm going to start talking about it a little bit in the tube cast just to give people like some frames of reference, because I feel like a lot of people are more familiar with law of attraction or the secret than, um, obviously greater hermetic thought. Um, but yeah, so those are some recommendations. Uh, what do I think of digital planners? I think use what works for you. Um, people have asked me if I'm going to release my planners in digital. I might actually, it's on my list to consider it when I do my 2020 things because I have seen a few videos on them. It's not for me. Like I wouldn't plan on my iPad or anything like that um, because I love the paper aspect and I don't like having to deal with something that needs to be charged all the time as like a place for my planning. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it if it works for you. Um, and I know a lot of people have asked me, will I format my planners so that you can use them in whatever the apps are on your iPad? I'm going to, I'm not promising anything. I have scheduled to look into that topic more deeply during that time. Okay, so some people are saying they miss those entrepreneurship chats. Excellent. Um, yeah, Anna says, I originally came for the planner videos, but I've learned so much from the business chats and your manifestation videos, even though it's a little woo woo for you. Yeah. See, this is the thing, right? Um, I started like, you know, I not even started with planners. I can't even say that. I started with tech videos 10 years ago. And then I went into like more like lifestyle sorts of videos. And then I found the planner community and I'm like, this is my purpose in life. I didn't even know this existed. And then it became my business. And then it's just like, I could, 
I, I know there's a lot of people who follow me who want me to be the person who reviews planner after planner after planner after planner. I think probably if you're even new to me, right, you've probably gotten a sense just from this live stream of how that would be incredibly monotonous for me because my interests are so much more like philosophical and research and writing based. I'm never going to become a channel that just sits in reviews planners. I know I have in the past done a few reviews of things that were interesting to me, like were just legitimately interesting to me. And that's what I do. If something is legitimately interesting to me, I bring it to you guys as well to show you like, hey, this is what I thought of this. But that's not what my channel is um, going to be overall, right? It's not going to be me just getting planner after planner after planner and saying, this is what's good about it. This is what's bad about it. What I want to do is be the person who shows you guys how to use any planner, no matter what, right? <laughs> to make it work for you um, by just teaching, by teaching you like the actual strategies, the actual processes, doing things like this, right? Because you don't need to be using my planner to get any of this done, right? Now you might need to use a planner and then something else, right? Like you might need to do whatever planner you're using. You might need like a second notebook for some of the extra stuff that I'm talking about, like brain dumping and, and things like that. But I just want to teach you the process, right? Because I'm more outcome based, right? Like I want you guys to become more productive. I don't want to sell you a planner necessarily, even my planner, which may seem a little silly for me to say, but like, I don't care if people use my planner or not. I only made this because so many people asked me to bring it into a physical copy so that people could, um, actually have it if they didn't like doing the print print on demand sort of things. And um, I have been asked to do a video and I am going to do this soon where I actually deconstruct this so that you can put it into a, into a, like a planner if you wanted to deconstruct this, because I don't like offer, like I don't print and ship inserts, right? Like that sort of business model is not the business model for me. There's nothing wrong with that business model. There's so many people who have amazing businesses that are planner related to either selling and creating planners or inserts and stickers and things like that. And that's all wonderful. But I need like my business model and like my life is all about giving me the freedom to like, basically I'm Socrates. You guys, like, I just feel like I'm like the modern bougie philosopher, um, like the modern bougie alchemist. Maybe that should be my new name. I don't know. But yeah, that is what I'm all about. Like I am so enthralled with like learning about life and answering the big life questions. Like my entire life is around that. And I realized that that's not what everyone else's life is about. So I have to then take all of this like research and study and like what I get engulfed in and then present it to my audience in a practical way. Like that's the challenge of my brand. And I'm like so up for it. You know what I mean? Like I'm so up for it. I'm here for it, but it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing. Like if you wanted to think about what I do in my business, I'm like a, I don't know, a college professor, maybe like without being a college professor, right? Like I have like a, I have a degree. I like double majored, right? I'm not like not an educated person, but you know, not necessarily qualified to, you know, actually formally teach in a school on these subjects. But remember you guys can like do whatever you want in life. Like a lot of things that we have in life, like a lot of topics, interests, areas of study, like you can become what you want in life without necessarily going to school in a lot of cases. Look at Kim Kardashian. She's becoming a lawyer, you guys which I think is actually really freaking awesome because with the amount of money they have for her to actually do a job that's so incredibly difficult, like you can't say that she's, you just can't say a lot of negative about that. Like, unless you are just a negative person, sorry. But, um, yeah, sorry. Okay. Off the, yeah, it's nothing. We're not about the Kardashians here. Although I do like to mention them because I think they're just like such a good pop culture example. Um, let's see. Someone said, my new master planner doesn't have the yearly tracker for some reason. My old one did. Uh, is it the same version? Um, Christy, if you have the undated version, it doesn't have... Oh, wait, are you talking about this yearly tracker? Because if it doesn't have... All of them have this in it. So if you don't have this, then it might be a misprint and I would return it. But if you're talking about these trackers in the beginning, the calendar trackers in the beginning, these are only in the dated versions. Oh, I love this. Random said, do you do what you want? Consider our request if you wish, but it's up to us to follow what we want or not. Love checking out what, whatever you do. Exactly. That's the way I feel about like the, these platforms. It's like, I'm creating stuff. If you want to create, if you want to see it, like if you're interested, you know, take a listen. If you're not pass, <laughs> like, um, you should buy the music book opener clip. I do have the music book opener clip. I do. It's here in my desk somewhere. But I have to like go through so many different pages and actually like this is staying open, right? 
just for me to write, I just keep it open. Like it's, it's staying open, right? I do have the music book opener clip though. Kim. Okay, so I think I've got them here. Okay, so Christy said that the moon phase one. Yeah, that's only in the dated ones um, because it has dates in it. You know what I mean? So, and like um, the dates are in such a way that here they have like the days and the months and the day of the week. So it's not something I could put in an undated planner because then it would, could go off, you know? Okay, so I'm not even done this yet. Jeez Louise. Okay, and we're a little bit into an hour. Okay, not too bad. I think we're doing great here, you guys. Only an hour. This might just be like a two hour stream for me. <laughs> Okay, so um, do I have anything else that I need to do? Videos here, TubeCast here. I think that's all that. Um, the only other thing that I like to do in this spread is, and you know what, I do this after. Da, 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 da. Okay. Next, let's go to my monthly tasks. Yeah. And I just have some reference information that I kept off to the side to like make sure I did not skip things because I'm actually planning right now. Okay. Um, Monthly master task list. This is where I put all of my tasks that I would like to get done for the month. A lot of them come from project plans in the back of my planner and are moved here for the month that they belong in. So we're going to go ahead and fill this stuff out. I always put in my brain dump on this list because it's just an easy check mark. And it reminds me to do it, you know? It reminds me to do it and it's just an easy check mark. I love writing down tasks that are just an easy, oh, I can just get to do that. It's done. I also need to do a Q3 business plan because we're moving into Q3. I like to do this at the beginning of the quarters. Um, that might be might be something. Doing a Q3 business plan, I might I do it in my planner um, with my brainstorm sheets. I'll show you here these brainstorm sheets. And I know you guys want a video on how to use these brainstorm sheets. I promise I'm gonna do it, but um, I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, so I do do my brainstorms, uh, my content. Um, my business plans, I kind of break things out here, like outline things here. So I might actually do that as a live stream. That would be cool to do as a live stream. Now, this is a new thing I want to show you guys that I've been doing. Maybe like a little tip. For anything that you do, maybe like reoccurring, right? I have started to, like you, for obviously for me, the tube cast and the videos, right? I make a number of videos a month. So what I like to do now is I actually will list out my videos on this monthly task list. And the first thing I do is I count how many I have to do. So one, two, three, four, four videos. And then there's five tube casts. And I put video and like colon, video colon, right? And then I'll fill in the title. And then I'll put the five tube casts in. Because this actually helps me... Um, I used to actually write down like the title of whatever I was working on in the week, but then I would change things and I would get annoyed. So, you know what? I just write down like what content is going to be out on what day. And then I keep track of like the actual titles of what I put in here. Right. So as I make my videos or like, you know, do my videos, I'm going to fill them in here. And that way I can just check them off, right? Because technically they're just work that I do over and over and over again. Now, I also have to do, I also need to do, I should have done this before, uh, a Q3 Instagram plan. And then we said we were doing, oh, I was going to write, right? So what I'm actually going to do, right, how many weeks are in this month? Five. Okay. I'm going to write down literally five instances of write book for each session. And I need to complete five writing sessions for my book this month. So this is just a way to make something that you say you're going to do like, you're like, I'm going to do this once a week, right? And then you kind of think like, oh, when am I going to do it? Like I need to you know, schedule it in, or it's going to be something that's going to float a little bit. And this kind of helps me because when I've completed a session, I can actually check something off and feel like I've made progress. I know this is maybe kind of a lame way to like trick your brain into feeling more productive, but it works for me. So I've got five sessions for writing the book. And then every time I do one, I can just check it off, check it off, check it off. Instead of like having like write the book, 
and then having to like check it or not check it off if I completed all of them at the end of the month. Because nothing's worse than like actually making progress and then not feeling like you made progress because you didn't, we weren't able to make a check mark. <laughs> okay, so next is, oh yeah, that instant income thing. Oh my God, this is a whole thing. This is like a main project for this month. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So these are all the tasks that I need to work on. Again, I'm going to fill in these video and tube cast things a little bit later after, probably after I do my Q3 business plan, maybe, or I have some ideas. Like I kind of know where I'm going. Like I know where I'm going with the tube cast at least. Um, the videos, I'm going to have to like decide what I'm going to do next because I have so many video ideas and like so many things I owe you guys that I really need to do. So let's see. Any questions? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, let's do a quarterly business plan. I'll, I'll take a look at my schedule and I will, um, see if I want to do that, like schedule it in maybe like soon so I can show you guys how to do it. And even actually, if I do like a mock one based on like, if I need to go and do mine right now to actually start working, I can always just like walk you through the process too in like a live chat or something like that. Okay. So those are the things to do. And now the thing I do is I go back to my monthly and, um, and now, again, this is going to depend on the kind of planner you have. A lot of planners have like a notes section um, or like a notes column on the week, right? And because I have, I actually, you know, designed mine to have that as well. Um, I use this as an opportunity to kind of pick like my top three things for the week, right? And assign them to a week so that I can make sure that all of these things are actually getting done. So we'll go ahead and start filling these things out based on like, that to-do list I just made, um, this week. Okay. So the first, this is the first week of the month and I need to do my bulk filming. So I do try to bulk film YouTube videos so that I have them like ready to go. I can just like edit them every week and get them go. So I will have like a bulk filming day. Um, that doesn't mean that like every video you guys see is actually been part of this bulk filming day because a lot of times I'm like, Ooh, I have a new idea and I want to put this out first. Right. And I'll do that. But this helps me so that I have like videos on hand if I don't have like inspiration, right? I've got like a default, so I make sure that I'm actually putting things out. The other thing I really need to do is I also need to bulk audio record for the pot, uh, for the tube cast. So I'm gonna try to work on those two things um, this month, uh, this week, because it would be great to have that out of the way so that I can focus on writing, Should we do that? Should we say write? We'll put a writing session in. <laughs> so we'll put a writing session in for every week, actually. I'll put that in for every week. Okay. So that means it's a priority for every week because it's there. The second week, hopefully, all those things are done. So I can work on slides. Not like a tremendous amount of things to do here. Um, work on slides and resources. Probably gonna take me like, wow. Well, yeah, it's gonna take you two weeks to do those. At least.
I want to have the theta. Mm, this is where it's like I need to be like realistic, <laughs> but I also want to push myself to get stuff done. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna try to commit to having something done for my beta, and then. I might also be able to do like funnel stuff here. So then I can maybe work on modules here. And site stuff. That seems good. Okay. So I've got those things listed out now. And I've got my to-do list here. And this is my monthly tracker. And honestly... This is something I might actually end up changing and putting it back to an expense sheet again or some, something else here for the 2020 planner. But um, I've been using my High Vibe Bible to track my, um, to do my monthly tracker. And also I have like stickers for my planner that I will use. So here, you go. we're going to go ahead and do the week now too. So we'll go ahead and do that. Kim says, I just want to say your planning videos have helped me get so much done and we'll be purchasing your planner. What's going to be new in your 2020 planner? Well, not I don't know what's going to be new in the 2020 planner. I want to do a new cover um, style, but also um, I'm considering changing, like I said, this page right here, this tracker page, um, because I don't use it as much. And my planner design is first and foremost for me. <laughs> so if I don't use it, as much. I I don't know. It might go. Who knows? It might go. So a lot of people, it's funny because when I got rid of the expense sheet, I mean, a lot of people wanted a tracker and then some people wanted the expense sheet. And now I'm actually thinking like, what would be the best thing to do? Like what would be the best thing, the best use of that space? So I just have to think about it. But I, like I said, I'm going to probably get you guys involved in it somehow. So you guys can like tell me what you like and maybe I'll show you designs and then you guys will just be like, oh, I want that. And you guys can vote and then maybe not even just vote because I actually think voting sometimes is a little bit not helpful for me just to see how many of you want something because it's not about numbers for me. It's about how people would use something. So I'd want people to be able to like explain to me why they don't want something else. You know what I mean? So then I can actually use like logical arguments to determine what's really the most helpful for everyone. So I put these guys down. These are the boxes I use for like my videos. Once I have the titles, I'll put them in there. Um, you, you, you. No, no, other one. Now something else that I do on a weekly basis, you guys may know, is I do my top five, which is five projects or things that I'm focused on. Three of them will always be what's on that list. And five is literally just like an, it's a random number because there's five, not random, but it's five days in a week. So I don't to do ones. I want the to do one. Do I have no more to do ones? Ah, there's a to do. I really need to print some more of my most frequently used stickers. Okay, to do. I put to do up here. My top five. Uh, uh, uh. Someone said, Oh, wait, hold on. Got a lot of questions. Okay. L D. Laura Smith says, so for July, would you cap your monthly task to 15 with three priorities per week over five weeks? <sighs> no. <laughs> um, so the, like, okay, so that's, just to help me prioritize. 
right? So these are, I'm going to do more than these things each week, but this helps me priorities. Like I said, on my weekly, I do five things, right? I try to do something different every day. Um, so that's a no, but that just helps me just get focused, right? Like that just helps me get focused and say, look, if you, if you run out of time, if shit hits the fan, right? Um, what are the three most important things to do? Like what are the things that you should probably work on earlier in the week? And that's going to be Tuesday bulk filming, um, Wednesday, perhaps doing bulk audio because one audio will be due that day. Um, honestly, I've worked all this weekend, <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to work tomorrow. I really should though, because I'm probably going to end up not working Thursday and Friday because of 4th of July. So this end up actually might end up being a slower week anyway, but basically one of the things that I do in order to prevent myself from getting so far behind if I don't complete things is, um, I choose priorities, right? I choose priorities. And that's where like my top five comes in to say, what else do I need to get done? And then of course, this list here for my monthly is by no means all of the work I will do, right? This is by no means all the work I will do. But this is all of the work that comes from projects that are important, that are tied to my goals that are important to me, right? So these are the most biggest priorities. Um, and then other things will get added to my week. For example, on Saturdays, I do my meal prep, my meal planning and meal prep. So um, not planning prep usually. Um, planning happens on Friday because I go grocery shopping, but meal prep gets done on Saturdays usually. So that's not something that goes on my monthly task list because it's something I do every week and if I don't do it, it's not the end of the world. It's just like a habit thing that I like to do. Um, I also don't put like writing my book. See, these are things like sometimes they get put on this tracker because they're multiples like for me to record, but I've been putting them in my Bible instead um, or on a list here. I'll show you what I do here. I'll put one in right now. This is my little habit tracker sticker and it goes, I always put it on my Monday. And then I'll put in what my things are here, like my habits that I'm working on. Oh my gosh, I spelled gratitude wrong. <laughs> Meditation. Listen to a book on tape. I like look at previous ones to remember all the things I do. Oh yeah, I've been focusing on walking the dogs recently because now we have two. So it's really important that they spend like really good quality time like getting walked like formally. So this is something that like every day they go for a W-A-L-K um, like very intentionally, you know. So um, I just have that on there. And then just put keto in the bottom. This is just like diet stuff. Okay. So that's a, that's a tracker. So I hope that makes sense, right? It's, I don't just do 15 things. Um, I do much more than what goes on my monthly task list. Um, more things will go on my planner. And then there's always things that like we do that we don't even write down because it's just like part of life, you know? So for people who have full-time jobs, do you have any suggestions on how to plan around the job? when there are life tasks as well. Yeah. Um, well, what's your problem like right now? Like what are you having a hard time with? Like you're having a hard time having a full-time job and then planning your tasks. So for example, um, like you need, like when you say suggestions, like I could have a million suggestions for you that are different. Like what's the issue that you have specifically? I'm going to assume that maybe you are having a hard time scheduling tasks. So, um, cleaning. Define what you need to clean around your house. Maybe like put it into zones. That's what I normally do and have either a routine for it. Um, that's like maybe you do a certain zone every day or you have like a certain thing that you're responsible for and maybe like partners, roommates, other family. And if you live with other people, maybe they have their part. Like I mentioned earlier, the importance of dividing household responsibilities. Um, and then just put it in your planner, right? So, um, like I will put cleaning in my planner. Um, usually I do some cleaning on Fridays. Like I do, well, I'm really good about like kind of cleaning up as I go through the house, but I do like my vacuuming and tidying up on Friday. That's like the big thing. And then usually like once a week I clean up my bathroom and it just kind of gets done like whenever I don't necessarily need to schedule it. And if I'm like a few days off, it really doesn't matter to me. Um, that's just kind of like habits I have. But if you are having trouble establishing your own habits, then I would say schedule them in, right? When you get home from work on Monday, are you going to vacuum? When you get home from work on Tuesday, 
Are you going to clean your kitchen? Um, creating a routine. And I do have like a video that's very old, but it's still relevant on how to plan a cleaning routine. Christy says her planner has an expense page on a tracker because it's an undated one. Uh, you're very welcome cards by TLC. Uh, someone said out of curiosity, would you ever offer your printed planner to bloggers for review? Um, yeah, send me an email. Send me an email. Alexis at strangecharm.com. Rose says, can you do a demo of how you make your planner labels? Sounds basic, but I'd love to learn how you customize print cut, etc." Um, maybe, maybe I'll consider putting that on the list. <laughs> um, do you, you don't mean designing them. You just mean there's the PDF and you just open the PDF in like Adobe. And then you're just supposed to go in and type it in and then print them out on the label paper and then cut them out. Or you could, if you have a silhouette, you could finagle that, but, uh, okay. Yeah. Maybe for all of my stickers, maybe I'll go through how I print and cut them for a silhouette. Maybe I ha I actually did outline a video to do that like a few years ago and just never did it. <laughs> like I literally have, I have an entire video like already outlined. <laughs> um, Quintina says that she's resetting her planner system and routines for the mid year. And this is helping her set it up. Excellent. Uh, If I wanted my planner to just look like yours, which stickers, dividers, etc., do I need besides the master planner? Would you offer these as a package? So certain things I can't offer as a package because the master planner comes through Amazon, like it's fulfilled through Amazon. Um, but I have been thinking about that actually. I did think of I was thinking about that, like actually creating a like a a planner package that was like, if you want the digital planner, this is everything. The thing is though, when it comes to like my stickers specifically, like I can tell you like like the, the dividers are on my shop. They're tabs, right? These tabs are on my shop. So you can get these right now as a printable. Um, the stickers, I use all of my stickers, right? Like these are like, every, this is probably all of, or most or vast majority of all of my sticker designs just like printed out and I just use them, right? Because designers prerogative, right? I can just have all of my stuff. <laughs> um, so that would be a little bit hard, but like the planner and like these tabs, if you have the physical planner, you just buy the tabs and you're good to go and pick like which stickers will work for you because I don't expect that everyone's stickers are going to work. You know, all the stickers are for everyone. Do you have a guide when you purchase the monthly tabs to have them lined up appropriately? You mean these tabs? Um, not really because I use a, um, I just am very careful, right? And the sticker paper I use is repositionable. So if it doesn't, I take it off and put it back on. So Penny, my advice would be to use repositionable sticker paper. <laughs> okay, and so Random said that the the prior the the routines and prioritizing them. Yep, that is what you should work toward towards. Absolutely. Like whenever you have a problem with productivity, you're like, I need to know how to do this and this. It usually comes down to just schedule it in. You know what I mean? Like put it in your planner to do it in a certain time. Set a reminder on your phone if you're someone who will forget. That there's really execution, right? Is like really all up to you. You know, there's a couple of different things I can say to like help you execute, like in terms of planning it out, scheduling it in, making a reminder. But after that, you've got to get up and do it. Like I can't do that for you. <laughs> okay. So I haven't even gotten through this right now. Okay, my to-dos for this month. Okay, so we've got the, so the to-dos, the actual individual tasks, I need to do a video, I need to do a tube cast. Um, these two have to be done. I should probably do my Q3 business plan this week too. That would be a good idea. It would be a good idea to do my Instagram plan too, wouldn't it? Do it all at one time. <laughs> Right? Sometimes it's like planning is just a matter of logic, right? That's why I really think that like if you brain dump first, your brain is going to have a much easier time seeing what logically should be done. Like Alexis, do your business plan and your Instagram plan at the same time. And we even like outline all your YouTube videos. Um, I need to schedule a book writing too. 
right? Uh, Friday, if you guys don't know, is my CEO strategy day. I have a whole video on that. So I kind of just marked that off. I'm going to make myself a sticker for that, though. I need to design a sticker for that. Okay, so maybe tomorrow. Okay, that's what you're going to have to do. Monday, I'm going to have to outline videos. And then Tuesday is going to be the bulk film. Wednesday, okay. And see, I'm much better actually pre-planning the beginning of my week. Am I still in frame? Sorry. Um, I'm actually, let's see, am I still in focus? Yes. Okay, good. Go back. Okay. I have to outline the videos this day so that I can bulk film them that day. <laughs> I need to write my audios. Mm -mm -mm. I need to record and upload one of the two casts. So let's see. Okay, let's do this. Uh, I should just do this right now, shouldn't I? Okay, hold on. I'm going to think about this. I might not put it in my planner, but if you guys are interested, I think maybe Wednesday night <laughs> we will do a live business plan video like this. So just kind of pencil it in and it would probably be, how is 7 p.m.? I might, might need to do it eight, right? Because there's people on the East Co West Coast because I'm on the East Coast. Eight means it's five. Hmm. I don't want to do it too late. Maybe eight. Maybe eight. Keep an eye out on my channel. You guys will see the live like pop up and I'll share it on Instagram. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. But if I do it, I'll do it on... I'm actually going to take a business planning sticker and stick it on Wednesday. <laughs> stick it on Wednesday later here because I might do a live business planning then okay so tomorrow is going to be outlining videos that is a very big project to do so that might be the only thing I write down for right now and then if other things pop up yeah okay so oh yeah here yeah, I do this stuff duh meal prep, Sunday, plan for the next week. Those are things I just kind of always put in. I usually do like self-care on a Friday night. Where's my little self-care sticker? Oh, I see you. Is there another one? I have two of these printed out. I'm so organized with my stickers, but really it's not like I don't really use them other than when I'm doing like my one big plan, so. And that one has the... Oh, here. Bulk film day gets the camera sticker. Friday is self-care, so it gets like a self-carry thing. Tuesday is the full moon. So I'll do something with that. I usually, a uh, new moon, so I'll, I usually take like a bath, a special bath. So maybe it's like Epsom salt or a lush Bath. Fourth of July. But 
get all okay put another sticker on fourth of july probably won't get much work done on fourth of july but we'll see I think that's, oh, doctor's appointment on Monday, duh. And I'll put the dog meds in here so I don't forget it. Okay. But basically, Monday, I'll try to make it an easier day, but because I've been working all weekend, but I have to outline video, so it's going to be a full day. And that's usually like, I do that the whole day. That's all there is. Um... Let's go back and I'll answer some more questions. And it says, do you integrate any tech-like tasks, reminders, notes, iCal into your planner process and how do you work that into your routine? So I have things that are set in my iCal that are just to be reminders. So like, I got a reminder today and I'll get a reminder tomorrow that tomorrow is the day that dogs get their medications. Um, so that's just a reminder, right? So usually I do these things as reminders. I do use the Apple Notes feature um, to do a lot of idea capture, like in, like brain dumping, we would say, like when I'm away from my computer and things like that. Even like, like today's ch chat was actually like outlined in the notes feature, and it included some to-dos in there that I needed to make sure I got done as I was putting this together. Um, like maybe like a more in-depth to-do list of like, I need to do this, that, the other thing, etc. And in my planner, it probably just said like, set up event <laughs> sort of a thing, right? And it's kind of like, I did that to do additional breakdown, right? So my planner is like, you know, I'll use whatever, right? I'll use whatever to get stuff done. Um, it's the, pl the big part of the planner for me is just making sure that I'm keeping track of everything and that I know what I'm supposed to be doing at what time and I know how far I've gotten on certain things. It's by no means the place where everything in my life gets written down. Um, I will use anything and everything um, you know, that I've got m available to me to actually like remember to get things done and to actually like list things out either on the go because I don't really take this with me um, when I leave the house. So I do use, yeah, tasks, reminders, things like that. Um, on my phone to remind me of things, right? Dana says, how do you plan your content calendar, YouTube, Instagram, etc.? Uh, usually I just, I have like lists in my planner of ideas and then, um, I will sit down. Like I said, I need to sit down at some point this week, hopefully Wednesday, and actually just like map out, um, what I'm going to be doing. And I do have like a calendar that I haven't really been using very well in here. And I'll go to the second half of the area because there really isn't anything. I was using this yearly overview to um, like schedule in content um, so that I had it all and then I just kind of write it in my, or I put it in my like, um, yeah, let's see. Like here, this is like my monthly plan from January. Like normally I'll just write, I used to just write them in, but sometimes I like now I feel like I don't want to because I keep changing things right now. And usually because I don't really have a great plan in place yet because I haven't done my Q3 plan yet. And I also, um, well, things can change, you know what I mean? Like, because I'm so many things that I'm interested in, things can change at any moment. So I try to be really flexible, you know what I mean? Like, I will fly by the seat of my pants and if something doesn't work, I will have no problem moving on to the thing that I want to do. I really do just follow my gut and my instincts with a lot of the things that I do. Um, <clears throat> any apps? for productivity, organization, or goal setting that you would recommend. Um, I don't have a lot of app apps. Like I said, I use like my Apple Notes, my iCal, my email, you know what I mean? For productivity, organization, kind of, sort of. And goal setting, I do all my goal setting is um, based on my You Got This Workbook, which is like a workbook that you can get a digital with like a, a video or you can buy it on Amazon as well if you want like a physical one. But I do do... 
most of my stuff, like you're saying here on paper, right? I just like to write everything down. And like, sometimes I take sticky notes and write things on them and just like put them everywhere and organize things that way. If you've ever watched my brainstorm board video, that kind of shows you how I might brain use a, you know, brainstorm with like sticky notes to kind of get an idea for what I want to do. But again, I fly by the seat of my pants sometimes in terms of like, I just let my intuition guide me a lot, right? So I like to keep track of ideas. Like that's why brain dump is so big for me. Like I will keep track of ideas. So I always have options. I always remember what's important, right? Things that I could be doing. And then I let my intuition say, this is what we're going to do now. Also, if you guys have made it this far into the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, right? There are over a hundred of you on this right now. Oh my God, so many multiples. Oh no, there's a hundred, it was 111. Now it's 112, broke the 111 streak, but there's 44, thumbs up. There's 112 of you watching. There should be 112 thumbs up at least, okay? So thumbs up at this point, okay? Because you've been watching for a while. Um, <laughs> let's see, someone asked, I would love to know more about the moon phases and why you incorporate it into your planner. Um, so here, I'm going to tell you guys why. I, I, just a quick and dirty, and I will do like a better explanation of this one day. I track my moon phases, full moon and new moon. Because this has alchemy stuff involved, okay? Number one, I do like to do like sort of like little rituals for myself. Um, like I said, I'll take a new moon bath at the new moon. I do a full moon bath. You know, get in the bath, Epsom salt, lush balm, essential oils, dip tea candles, high, you know, good frequency music going on, set intentions, relax, right? Self-care. So good, right? Keeping you in the high vibe. But there's also other alchemical stuff that I'm studying, in terms of the way light and moon phases play into our health and well-being, in terms of, um, I'll give you an example that's a little bit personal. I cycle, and I think you know what I mean when I say that, okay? I don't want to say too many words that might be weird or gross. I cycle with the full moon, okay? Apparently, the, that's the way anciently we should have been. Like we should be, so women should be cycling with a full or new moon um, because those are regular four week intervals, right? Um, there's also some alchemical information that, like, you know, research, science stuff, um, ancient beliefs that now finally science has decided to look into because <laughs> they weren't coincidence. That's why they lasted so long. Um, so, Things like um, I don't use, and I've talked about this before, maybe if you follow me, but I do not like to use a lot of artificial lighting in my home. Obviously right now I'm heavily lit, heavily lit because I'm on a, on a live, but usually throughout the day, <clears throat> windows are open, light comes in. Um, I will use some lighting in the house during the day, but at night, specifically at night, which is when you'd think you use most of your lights, I don't like to use a lot of lighting at night. If I do, I've got like dimmers. So I like to keep it on a low dim. Reason is your body has these things in it called biophotons. We really don't understand them very well. It's basically light particles that operate your internal mechanism for life, survival, DNA replication, etc. And they kind of like, what is it called? Uh, I can't think of the word. Right. Circadian rhythms, right? Have I saying that right? You guys might remember. I think I just said cicada. There's a word that sounds like that. That's the rhythms of sleep cycles that are due to light or darkness being exposed to them. I have a belief that I'm testing out that it comes from alchemical knowledge, comes from some scientific research that's just now finally being done, that being in a state of light, too much light, during a time where the light is not on outside is disrupting our internal um, mechanisms, right? So I... We'll leave lights on in the house sometimes if it's light outside, but once it gets dark outside, I try to remain in mostly darkness so that my body can, and those biophotons are reacting to what is natural and the harmony of the earth that humans were intended to have. So it is circa circadian, circadian rhythms. Okay. So you got me there. So that's why I track the moon cycles because I like to know when there's a full moon, when there's a new moon. I like to see what's going on. I kind of just like to be to be aware of like what's happening and how I'm reacting in my body to certain things that are happening. Um, if you didn't know this, like in other countries, I have a girlfriend who's from Sri Lanka. I think they do this in Sri Lanka and India. They 
don't go to school during a full moon. Like they actually have off. I have another girlfriend who actually is not from India, but she actually lived in India as a child um, because her mother moved over there. But um, she, you know, they don't go to school during full moons. Um, it's part of their, I don't know if it's religious necessarily. I think it's just part of their like practices probably because of religion. But um, uh, yeah, so Random Thought says, I'm familiar with this, with um, indigenous spirituality and their belief in a woman's moon time makes them very powerful this time. Fascinating. Yeah, because it does, this is the thing, you guys. Um, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to say indigenous or very ancient <laughs> that we don't talk about nowadays anymore. Um, but then like science, like all of a sudden, like proves it right. You know what I mean? Like, sorry, like, okay, like, how about we maybe give a little bit more credence to the past as if it's not something that's going to kill us. Right. So, you know, I don't need my lights on in my house all the time. You know what I mean? Good for the environment too. Right. So, um, yeah, that's just like a lot of the things that I do. And so there's a reason that I track certain things in this tracker too. I also like to track, like I do like to track Mercury retrograde. I just think it's fun. Uh, do I think Mercury retrograde really affects you? Mm, I think it probably realistically doesn't, but I, again, alchemical principle here, because the fact that some people believe it does, it has now become a thought that now has its own life, right? So if you guys remember the conversation that I had about the genies and the genius, um, and the idea that thoughts are in entities that can attach themselves to people or actually make themselves, um, real. Did I talk to you guys about the pendulums yet? Was that in the last recording or did I, I don't remember what my last tube cast was. Um, if I discussed something called a pendulum with you, I think I did. Um, basically, ideas have an energy and I think they can make things as real as people can make things real. So um, again, call me, I don't care. You think I'm crazy. I, don't, I'm, I know a lot of people do, uh, but just, I don't know. I think I'm doing pretty well for myself. <laughs> so um, yeah. I think that because Mercury retrograde, some people do believe it and that it's like in popular thought now that like Mercury retrograde is a thing. Even if you don't believe it, you know about that. So you're affected by it. You know what I mean? Like, I think it can become something that ends up affecting you in maybe your subconscious or whatever. And this is stuff that like I actually research into you guys. Like I actually look for studies. I read books that are about these things to find out what the line is. You know what I mean? for like how it actually affects us because there's a lot of things that came from ancient wisdom, right? Even like old wives tales that have truth in them. Okay. I'm going to give you really quickly, blow your mind a little bit really quickly. Uh, this is a religious example. I'm not trying to push any sort of religion on you. Um, I'm just giving you an example that you may be familiar with. If you're someone who has practiced a Christian or, um, Judaism at all, something like that. The idea that, um, Jesus, right. So is called the lamb of God, right? Um, Lamb was very popular to be slaughtered as a sacrifice to God in ancient times. Lamb, number one, lamb would have been prevalent in the Middle East at that time. It was a very major meat source for them. Um, but on top of that, lamb is also the only meat that does not have an associated food toxin to it. Um, I, I think maybe that's the way to say it. The example would be pork has trichinosis, right? Um, is a known uh, bacteria, not bacteria. It's actually like a worm or something. Um, but there's like a known food poisoning thing that happens from pork, which is why I believe, right? And no one's ever said this, but I'm going to go with pork. No wonder in Judaism, pork is an unclean animal because pork had estrichinosis, which is one of the worst food-based illnesses that you could get, right? So if you think about like hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, and they did not have proper things to store their food and things like that, lamb would have is the preferred, it's like the perfect meat, because it does not have anything related to it. Now, can it still get salmonella if it touches salmonella? Yes, but it doesn't have its own um, specific food poisoning thing, a uh, toxin thing, bacteria thing. Um, so for example, I'm Arabic, right? You guys may know that I'm Arabic. I'm Syrian. My family, like my grandfather, who's Arabic, he would eat raw lamb. Okay. That's uh, called kibbeneya, raw lamb, like mixed with like bulgur wheat and things like that. It, you can eat it. You can eat it raw. <laughs> so it's a perfect food. So this is why I think, um, we slaughtered in the past, 
lambs were slaughtered for sacrifice, sacrificial reasons. Why Jesus is known as the Lamb of God, right? Because it's, again, there's probably a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons is lamb is a perfect meat in the Middle East, right? Perfect meat. It does not give you a sickness the way that other meats may have if they weren't properly cooked. And that's why I think pork is considered to be an unclean meat because it has, you know, there's a lot of other things that like pork's like pig skin and stuff like that. They're like, like very closely related to humans, strangely enough. Um, but it also has a terrible trichinosis, a horrible, like if you ever get that, it's horrible, horrible to get that. So um, luckily I have seen some information that we no longer have trichinosis in the United States anymore. Like they've actually been able to eliminate it. Um, but who knows if like a super bug version of it will just now mutate. I shouldn't have said that out loud. Oh my God, did I just make it real? Oh, I'm so sorry. I take it all back. Um, so let's see what we got here. Dana says, I feel like we manifest things if we know about, you know, Mercury retrograde. Sometimes I'd rather not know. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, that's why you shouldn't, sometimes you don't want to know. Ignorance can be bliss. That's why I really try to watch what I say out loud, especially to like hundreds of people. Um, Susan says, my mother is from Germany and I used to receive a move calendar as a way of tracking optimum times for certain activities. Yeah. See, like this isn't like the craziest idea. Um, yeah, on what I said about pork, exactly. It's gross. Pork can be gross. So, example. I don't even remember where that came from, actually, what we were talking about, but I hope that little tidbit of knowledge helps you. So these are the sorts of things that Alexis does all day, reading books to understand all of these things and putting together the dots, right? Collecting, connecting the dots. Um, so, yeah, okay. So that's, um, that's the planning, you guys. We did the planning. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my face here. Hi. <laughs> um, definitely make sure to give this video a thumbs up again. There's over 100 people and I don't have over 100 likes. Only have one down vote. So I hope that's helpful. So yeah, like some of these things are a lot of the things that I think about, talk about, research. Um, I'm trying to integrate into the best possible philosophy for sharing with you guys. And these are things that like I want to put in like books. I want to create perhaps a course about this. Um, not just like a law of attraction course, not even just like a manifesting course, but like a actually aligning to ancient principles that actually have uh, a real resonance in our lives still. <laughs> Where is a good place to find this moon and astrology information to track? Um, oh, what is that one website I use called? I think it's called like, you can get, you can literally Google um, moon calendar and you'll find the phases of the moon, things like that. Um, I have like an app on my phone. I think it's called, let me write, Time Passages is the app, but that's expensive. That's like, honestly, it's an app that like a professional astrologer would have, but I have it because I like to track all that stuff. Um, and I have all of my friends in my phone, like all of my friends. It's like, what's your birthday? What time were you born? Where were you born? I need to know your your sun, moon rising. I need to know where your Mercury is. I need to know where your Venus is. I need to know where your North node is, right? All the time. And I have like so many friends who are like, Alexis, tell me something, you know, does this have anything to do with my astrology? And I'll pick out my phone and be like, mm, well, it could be this, you know? Like, so we do this all the time. So yeah, I have like this crazy, it's very expensive. It's like 50 bucks or more for some of the things on that app. But um, you could just literally Google moon calendar and you'll find something. And I think Cafe Astrology is one. I don't think I use that the most. Astrolab, I think is another one. But literally, you Google it, you will find it. We're in the age of information here. If you want to know the answer to anything, you can just Google it, and I bet you'd find it. Um, but I do like to double check the ast astrological information because I have had, like, found like websites where things are like a little bit off. I'm like, mm, this is not right. So okay, so we're done the planning. It's been two hours. Um, thank you guys for joining me. I can't believe how many of you are on with me still. Please feel free to ask me questions if you guys want to, or we will end this um, so that I can go about the rest of my day. Um, and you can go about the rest of yours. But if you guys have any other questions, let me know, and I'll answer them. But if not, we should peace out. And I'll have to think about doing this again on Wednesday at like 8 p.m. if it works out because I'm going to have to jam a lot of things into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because I'm sure I'm not going to work the rest of the week because of 4th of July and all that jazz. Or if I do, it just won't be like straightforward working. Okay. So check the description box of the video. I have some things for you. If you guys are interested, you are, you can get my planners. Um, I do have, for any of you who are interested, I know I've 
talked about this briefly, I think in like a video or something, but I do have now, if you're looking for, if you're someone who already has like a planner down and you're not using my planner, but you're like, Alexis, I want the second half of your planner, which is the project planning and the brainstorming and brain dumping and the notes and everything. I've made a printed bound project planner. <laughs> I made a printed round project planner. It's in the, in the description. And of course, like in my shop, there are printables for my project planning. There's printables for, um, it's under the build your own planner. Um, there's brilliant ideas and project planning, which are the two sections, but they're merged together in one bound half letter size book. If that's what you want as a supplement to whatever planning system you have. Cause I realize that not everyone like likes this calendar system I have, and that's absolutely fine. Whatever your calendar system is, I definitely recommend people have a project planner. Um, I think the brain dump section is really useful. It's something I haven't seen anywhere else. Like people having like a brain dump and like the organize and act, you know, I don't even see, you don't even see planners that really have project plans in them. Um, and then the brain storm sheets as well. So I feel like there's a lot of great tools in there. If you're not someone who wants to print them, you have a bound version as well. Um, do you have any tips or videos about which habits to incorporate first? Uh, okay, so I love questions like this because it's an opportunity for me to teach you guys that the information that I have for you guys is not a one and done scenario, okay? It's not like I can give you guys all of the answers in, in your life, right? Um, what you want to work on is going to be based on your goals. I definitely recommend checking out the last TubeCast episode. I think that is the one last one that's been published. And I think it talks about this um, in terms of like controlling your life, personal responsibility sorts of things. And I can't tell you what to do. Like I can't tell you what the next thing that you need to do is the first thing you should do because the habits that I do are for me. And the habits that you do are for you. And you and I are two different people that even if you wanted the same things that I wanted, the way that you might need to do it might be different than the way that I need to do it. So in terms of like habits and things like that, like I talk, I think in that video, I talk about morning routines being a little bit, um, it doesn't matter what you actually do in your morning routine. A morning routine has a purpose and the, you know, most people are probably following a morning routine that probably doesn't even fulfill the purpose actually. Um, which is unfortunate, which is why I want to like explain to you guys more about what that purpose is in the next episode of the TubeCast. I kind of talk about it in the, in that previous episode, but it's not about the individual tasks that you do. It's like never about the individual things you do. It's about getting in alignment with what you want and figuring out what is going to help you get there. Right. I love reading about the morning routines and the routines about famous people who are like rich and famous and things like that. And a lot of times they do a lot of the same things like work out in the morning or uh, meditate in the morning or I don't know. Um, Tony Robbins like jumps in like a polar bear plunge, which is kind of nuts um, because that's just like part of his life and his day. But it's not the jumping in that polar bear plunge thing that makes him successful. It's what that plunge helps him achieve um, for himself in an alignment with himself. So it's never about following exactly what I do or what anybody else does either. Like that's the first way to get yourself off track is by trying to follow someone else's path. So that is why I have this information that I want to give to you guys to empower you to make your own choices and to not follow other people. Because I thought like, it's like, again, it's like I'm trying to find planner piece. The person in the beginning who were saying that they change their planner every week, you probably have shiny object syndrome because you haven't gotten to alignment with like, you know, this is just what I need out of a planner and I'm just going to stick to this. If you are always looking to other people for answers, you're always going to be lost. Number one, because there's way more of them than there are of you, <laughs> right? So there's always going to be way more opinions from other, other people than yourself, right? So you're always going to have competing information and it doesn't apply. Like it's just not your path. Like you should follow your own path. Oh, that's right. I did. I did the Carl Jung. See, I can't even remember what I did. Like I have so many things going through my head at any one time. Yeah. I, I talked about the Carl Jung quote from the Red Book, um, which is, um, believe me, there is no teaching and no instruction that I give you. Who am I to presume to teach you? Um, everyone has basically their own path in life and they should be following their own path, getting alignment with what they want and using information like this to inform them to make better decisions. So, okay. So it looks like that's the amount of questions we've gotten. Again, 
this is a two hours. Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, of course, before you leave, I want to remind you once again to give this video a thumbs up and feel free to share it with anybody you think would find it interesting. If you're allowed, if you're a member of any like planning groups that let, allow you to share videos, I would appreciate you sharing this. If you have a Twitter, Instagram, talk about this, especially if you guys want me to do this stuff more often, like it does really motivate me if I see people talking about it and sharing it and like commenting and saying good things about it because it really like helps boost me up, right? Your energy um, towards my content helps me get like these ideas that grow bigger and I'm more motivated to accomplish them. So definitely make sure you do that. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button for more awesome videos by me, you guys. And make sure you're following me on Instagram at Miss Trenchcoat. And definitely check out my shop if ooh, my shop if you want to pick anything up. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff over there. But yeah, subscribe, like, share, and I will see you in the next video. Keep an eye out for um, the next the next live because I'll probably be doing a lot more of these since this worked out so well. Okay. Have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Now I just got to figure out how to turn it on. Oh, here we go.